There are many reasons why you might want to list all the files contained in a folder. Now in Excel, there are multiple ways that we can do this. For example, we might be able to use a VBA macro. However, when we start dealing with subfolders, the code becomes exceptionally difficult. Another popular method is using Excel for macros. Now these are a technology that was superseded in the mid 90s, so probably aren't best for this purpose either. Because nowadays we have a much better method, and that method is Power Query. Power Query lets us easily list all the files inside a folder and subfolders. Not only that, but it also gives us the ability to pull out various file attributes, such as whether it's a read-only file, the file size, whether it's visible or not. So in this video, let's look at how we do exactly that. Let's find out how we list all the files in a folder using Power Query. So fire up Excel and let's get started. Okay, here we are in Excel. I've got a brand new workbook. I'm just gonna go in the ribbon to go to data, get data from file and then from folder. There I can navigate to the place on my computer or network drive where I want to list all the files from. I've got my file selected here and I'm just going to click open. Now, depending on the number of files that you have, this might take a little while to churn through all of those files. Now, we already see some quite useful information here about these files. But what we're going to do is click the Transform Data button to bring all of this information into Power Query. So we've done that. That's now loaded this data into Power Query. You can see that we have some useful information. So we have content, that's the actual uh, file itself. We have name, which is the name of the file, the file extension, when it was last accessed, when it was last modified, the date it was created. We have this other attributes column that we'll look at in a few seconds. And we also have the folder path. Now, if we want to just get a list of the files in a folder, what we could do is select the folder path column. Then whilst pressing the control key, we can also click on the name column. From the transform ribbon, we can go to merge columns. We don't want a separator. I'm going to call this full file path. And then just click OK. Then if I right click on that and select remove other columns, you'll see that I just have a list of all the files in this folder, including their file path. So I can simply go to home, close and load, close and load to select an Excel table, go for the existing worksheet and then click OK. There we go. We now have all the files listed that are contained in this folder and subfolder. So we can use this for whatever other purpose we might need. Now you'll notice something about this, that this doesn't just contain all the files in the folder, but also the subfolder. So if I head back into Power Query, I'm going to remove our last two steps to just get us back to the source. You'll see that over here in our folder path that we have our folders and also our subfolders. Now let's suggest that we don't want to search through subfolders. We just want to search through the folder itself. Well, in that scenario, rather than using folder.files, we can use folder.contents. There we go. That just gives us the files that are in that folder. What it also does is that it gives us those folders as objects themselves. So in the content column, you can see that we have the word binary and that is for every file. We also have this item called table and that is for the folder. So using folder.files lists all the files containing folders and subfolders. Folder.contents just gives us the items that are inside that folder. Now, another useful thing about Power Query is that it gives us all of this additional information, such as date accessed, date modified, date created, and so forth. But there's also this attributes section. Attributes gives us access to even more information about these files. So I'm going to click on the expand icon. And it tells me what other columns that are now available. I'm going to uncheck the use original column name as prefix and then click OK. By expanding this, we can see that we have a huge amount of other information. 
we have the file size, what file type it is, whether it's read only, whether it's hidden, whether it's a system file. Now, I'm not gonna lie, some of this stuff, I have no idea what it does. And we can use this to filter down. So for example, if I wanted to just filter down to files over a specific size, click on there, and I go to numbers, say greater than 20,000, okay. That then gives me the file sizes, which are our largest file sizes. And if I wanted to, I can close and load that list back into Excel. So hopefully you found this video useful, that you found out that we can use Power Query as a method of listing all the files in a folder. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.